Okay, we're back again, and we're going to talk a little bit about power. And by definition, we can say that power is the rate at which work is done. That means that the equation for power is power equals work divided by time. And because of that, we can set this up using, remember that magic triangle to help us rearrange the equation? We should be able to use this to solve for either power, work, or time, depending on the variables that are given in any given problem. So we know that power, P, equals work, W, divided by time, T. That's the equation. And that means that, well, if we want to solve for power, we know that power equals work divided by time. Power equals work. Remember that this is a division line. Power equals work divided by time. And we know that if we're going to solve for work, that work is going to be power times time. Remember that this line means multiplication. Work, then, equals power times time. And we can also solve for time because we know that time, t, is equal to work divided by power. Work divided by power. So time equals work divided by power. Time equals work divided by power. Work equals power times time. Work equals power times time. And we know that power equals work divided by time. So let's take a look at an actual situation. Let's say that, that uh, you're going to walk or run or crawl or somehow get up a flight of stairs that has a height of, let's give it a nice easy height, let's say it's 2.0 meters. And here you are. You're going to run up the stairs. And let's give you, well, let's give you a mass. Your mass, let's say, is 75 kilograms. Well, the question here is, if you run up the stairs two meters high, lift this mass vertically a distance of two meters in, let's say, three seconds, how much power are you actually producing or generating? In other words, at what rate are you going to do the work to climb that height of stairs in three seconds. And here's how we're going to solve the problem. In this case, we have to do several things. The first thing we have to do is we have to find your weight because I've only given you the mass. And here you can see your mass is equal to 75 kilograms. So we're going to have to go back a little bit to that force of weight equation. Remember that force of weight equals mass times gravity. So first we're going to calculate your weight. The mass is 75 kilograms. And of course the acceleration due to gravity we know is 9.8 meters per second squared. We've talked about that before. So we find out that your weight is equal to, and I'm going to round this 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm just going to round it off to 10. And uh, 10 times 75 is 750. And that's going to be 750 kilogram meters per second squared. Or you should recall that a, meter, a kilogram meter per second squared is the same as a newton. So your weight is 750 newtons. Let me just say that again. Don't forget that a kilogram meter per second squared I could write that as 750 kilogram meters per second squared. Or, remember, because one kilogram meter per second squared is equal to one newton, I can actually write that down as 750 newtons. So your weight is 750 newtons, or at least this person's weight is 750 newtons. Well, why do we have to do that? Well, because we first remember, if we're going to calculate power, we have to know two things. We have to know the work and we know the time. Well, the time is given right here, 3.0 seconds. But we have to calculate the work. And if you recall, the work equation was work is force times distance. So we had to know the force that we were lifting through this distance. And that force is your weight 
which is not 75 kilograms, but 750 newtons. So what we're doing here is we're moving this force to this distance to do a certain amount of work in a particular time, which is in this case 3.0 seconds. So let's go ahead now, let's calculate the work that's done in order to move yourself up the stairs, two meters vertically up the stairs. Well, work is force times distance. The force is the force of weight. So that force of weight is 750 newtons times the distance, and the distance is two meters. So the work that you do climbing the stairs is two times 750, and of course that gives us 1500, and that's going to be newton meters. And again, we can write that as newton meters, but if you remember, a newton meter is actually a joule, so we can say 1500 joules of work has been done when you lift your weight vertically two meters up that flight of stairs. Interesting to note, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but the work done is equal to the energy that you have expended. So in order to go up the stairs, you have to expend 1,500 joules of energy by doing 1,500 joules of work. Remember, and we'll talk about this again later, the work done equals the energy expended. So basically, what that means is work and energy are measured in the same unit, joules. Well, so you're going to do 1,500 joules of work to climb up the stairs. Now we can calculate the power that you're expending or the power that you're producing going up the stairs in three seconds. I mean, you could walk up the stairs. You could crawl up the stairs. You could take 15 minutes to go up the stairs. You're still going to use 1,500 joules of energy and do 1,500 joules of work that's not going to change. The power is the rate at which you do that work. We could also say the rate at which you consume energy to move up the stairs. So we're going to use the power equation here. and We know that power equals work divided by time. That means power equals the work done, 1500 joules, divided by the time, here's where time comes into play, and we said time was three seconds. So the power is 500 joules per second. Now, we could say 500 joules per second, but we also should remember that a joule per second is a watt. So I can actually write this down as 500 watts. 500 watts. So the power that we use, power that we produce, going up the stairs, lifting this weight, 1,500 joules, two meters vertically up the stairs in three seconds, the power is 500 joules per second. Now, if we just briefly go back through that and look at all the steps, I gave you a mass. I gave you a height, I gave you a time. Your job was to figure out the power that this individual would produce going up the stairs in three seconds. And the first step, remember, was we had to calculate the person's weight because we needed a force. We used that force to calculate the work done going two meters up the stairs, and that work was 1,500 joules. And then we use that work and the time, which was three seconds from the problem, to calculate the power that this person was able to produce going up the stairs. And in the SI system, the metric system, power is measured in watts. 500 joule, excuse me, 500 joules per second. So keep this in mind. Find the force in this case the weight, find the work done in joules, and then use the power equation to calculate the power. 
This time it turned out to be 500 joules per second. That means this person is able to use 500 joules of energy every second going up the stairs.